when you're waiting for an exam you see some of your friends are getting enrolled into some other course or they are doing some job so you feel you're in a transitionary phase and then you have to remember that you made a choice and this is your journey so you have to stay on your path so stop looking at what others are doing a lot of you must have thought that i will never be able to qualify my ugc net exam in the very first attempt but today i'm going to help you meet somebody who has qualified in our very first attempt jrf in commerce with a score of 99.90 percentile so hello hello everyone my name is shubham singhania and i'm your mentor for ugc net paper 1 paper 2 commerce and management today i have a very very special guest she is ms samran dati and she has qualified her jrf in commerce with a 99.90 percentile and I welcome you, Simran, and I'm sure that whatever discussions we're going to have today is going to be highly helpful to all our future aspirants. So, welcome once again. Thank you so much for having me here. It feels really great to meet a mentor like you. Thank you so much, Simran. Simran, first question: Tell us something about your educational qualification. What all you have done? So, I have done my BCom honors from Hansraj, mm -hmm. then I have done my MCom from Delhi School of Economics. I just finished it in 2022. fantastic and when did you actually plan ki i want to get into teaching because when you are pursuing your masters at such a coveted institute like delhi school of economics where there are wonderful placements coming up for corporate there are various avenues so how did you actually land it up to teaching and when did you actually start your preparation so when i first got enrolled into my graduation in the very first month i realized that though i admire teaching i had never thought of it as a profession but meeting wonderful people at hansraj made me realize this is what i want to do mm -hmm. and i was i was also very sure about what i don't want to do that mm -hmm. is getting into the corporate world so in the all the three years i got to know about the procedure that you have to appear for this exam after your masters mm -hmm. that's how i aimed for delhi school of economics there were times where people would suggest to me that you can go into more lucrative options than teaching and that would give me doubt for a few days but i think doubt can be a good thing it helps you explore and get more clarity so then i got even more adamant that i have to do this right so it's more about passion and i also feel that if you can see work as a meaning or what you're making contribution or value addition to the society or in, in your own growth in terms of personality i think that matters a lot mm, sure similar my next question is that when and how did you actually start your preparation or what were the study material that you so, used so uh, i started my preparation in january but i spent the first month in deciding how i would study so if you go online you would see a lot of books and a lot of sources so i had to decide whether i want to prepare myself or i want to take some coaching and uh, after the first one i was exhausted i would not mention the name but i went to different platforms to see their trial sessions and i realized they were just giving you a lot of things to make you feel you are doing a lot but it doesn't get you anywhere then i attended one of your sessions and i realized oh my god all of this is missing from that material so then i decided that i have to get enrolled here so that's the sole exclusive material that i have referred the material and the live sessions that i practiced with fantastic fantastic was saying that because a lot of times what happened that if a mentor tries to tell students something of this sort it looks to be a kind of fake element or probably it, it's far from being realistic but when a candidate or when a student qualifies the exam in the first attempt with a jrf in commerce with such wonderful percentile and then tells this story then probably it gives a more realistic feel to to other students so thank you for saying that uh, similar my next question is that what has been your daily routine because coming from delhi school of economics i can very well understand that it's a very hectic schedule you have classes from 9 to 5 So, what was your daily schedule, and how did you actually strategize to complete your so syllabus? So, what I did was I prioritized which are the lectures or tutorials that I have to take. Meanwhile, what I did as soon as I was done with my morning routine, I will schedule this is the amount of work that I have to complete today. So, I'll cover most of it. Then I'll take some break at lunch, or I'll go for a workout. Then I'll come back in the evening, cover it again, and then spend my entire night relaxing. So, I just try to balance things. So I'm not overworked, but I have to stay on track. So that also tells me that you are a very meticulous planner. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Fantastic. Similar, so my next question is that every student, whatever mm -hmm. be their strength, whatever be their academic background, every student is bound to face some kind of difficulties. What were your difficulties first, and how did you actually tackle them? So I think I faced initially two difficulties. One of them was that uh, the exam got postponed twice. So after my final exams, there was a big gap, if you can see. 
So every time the exam gets postponed, you feel that you are running after something that is not happening. Mm -hmm. But then I remembered your words. You always said, just think that you are getting more time for the preparation. So I thought it will happen at the right time. We were just getting more polished to the preparation. Right. The second challenge that I faced was that uh, when you're waiting for an exam, you see some of your friends are getting enrolled into some other course or they are doing some job. So you feel you're in a transitionary phase and then you have to remember that you made a choice and this is your journey. So you have to stay on your path. So stop looking at what others are doing. Mm. I think very important element that you've highlighted here from your this particular answer is that we have to stop making comparison with others. Everybody is going to have their own journey. They're going to carry their own struggles. They're going to have their own strengths and weaknesses. And if you start peeping into others' life or what others are doing, I think every time you're going to come back with a lot of dissatisfaction. So it's better to focus upon our choices and take it along. Fantastic. Simran, that brings me to the next question and how useful are the past year papers and how useful are the mock tests? So I think that uh, when we study, we usually study topic types. But when you take a full-fledged paper, you will realize that uh, the pattern and style of the material that we are studying and when you have to apply that in a question is very different. So sometimes the concept is same but the language is very different. So you might also feel slightly disheartened at times. But I think every question that I don't know is actually an opportunity for me to learn something mm -hmm. and make the preparation even better. It also helps to identify the areas of course. Like I saw there was a lot of overlap between HRM uh, in the like the incentive plans and the wage plans and those things slightly overlap with the names. So then you have to identify and see these are the things I have to repeat and revise. Right. So I think it helps in analysis and also in learning the new things. How to actually apply what we have studied. Right. So then now we see that in terms of the latest trends, there's a lot of trend in terms of assertion reasoning based questions, statement based questions, then there are a lot of sequencing based questions. So these were some, some kind of questions that were not known in the last few years, but they have recently come up in the latest one or two attempts. So how have you tackled them? I remember taking a lot of sessions on assertion reasoning, but apart from that, what was your specific strategy? So my approach was also, I followed the live session. So every time I would cover a topic, I would go all, to the, all the revision marathons mm -hmm. and practice sessions. So there sometimes you would just blindly read it and then you would say you had to see this term or see this word. So that's how it And in sequence, we have to see the first and last and of course elimination method and then decide. But yes, assertion and reasoning, the rules are very important that mm. you've mentioned. Like the keyword, then striking it out and right. seeing if they are related or not. Right. So I think practice. So I think it, I personally feel very proud about listing all of this because but if the students are actually following them, the results follow. And I think that has worked for you. So fantastic. Since we have spoken a lot about academic thing. Now, let me just move up and talk about that. Now, since you have qualified GRF with such a wonderful percentile, what are your future plans? So I really want to go into teaching. And as a roadmap to that, I want to get into research. And my specific focus is on the mental health sector. So I've applied to a few places. Let's see if that works out or if I get lectureship somewhere. Fantastic. So there's a very balanced kind of an approach to explore teaching and at the same time prepare yourself for the research part also. Fantastic. So then that brings me to the last question for our interview today. And that is now since you have qualified GRF and you have such a good percentile, what is one advice you would like to offer to all our future aspirants who are going to appear for the June 2023 attempt? So my advice would be that when I actually got the result, I could not know if this is reality or my imagination. Because I had imagined that so many times in my mind. So my suggestion would be to be very positive but realistic. So believe in yourself that you can do it. But know that you have to put the right amount of consistent effort. So while my preparation, I if you keep thinking, you know, this will happen anyway, it's not going to happen. You have to believe you can make it happen and then know the right strategies and effort that you need and put it in. Right. And surround yourself with good company, which is all positive and motivating. So find the right mentor, which I think I did. Fantastic. So I think everything you have summed in beautifully. I would just like to highlight this specific point that reality check is very, very important as you already mentioned, because sometimes what happens when we have already years. So it's already there in our subconscious mind. So when we are attempting paper, probably we will be able to do it. And that gives us the image that we have prepared very 
but when you go and face some unwarranted questions or like say out of the box questions you are like yaar ye to kabhi questions attempt hi nahi kiye mm-hmm. so that is why i always emphasize that apart from whatever it's already mentioned like say in the past year or let's say whatever is already mentioned in the mock test it's important to practice some out of the box question and that is probably the reason why i keep creating questions ki assertion these thing questions create karke laate hain to see that whether students are able to solve it or not so i think kudos to your hard work and your consistency keeping along the positivity so thank you very much simran for being with us and sharing your wonderful insight and i'm very sure that all those who are going to listen to you this particular interview are going to love it and they're going to have a lot of inspiration from it thank you so much so thank you everyone for watching it i'm sure you must have enjoyed it so if you think that you've learned something new do subscribe to the channel and let me know if you have any doubts keep preparing all the best and god bless you